I'm going to talk about today about lessons learned from troubleshooting a shopping cart issue. So most of us have used shopping carts. Uh, my name is Hussein. I'm a staff dev at Shopify. Been doing full stack for about 10 years now. React for seven. I've made every possible mistake with React. Uh, there's my Twitter there if you want to give me a follow. Chelsea fan, unfortunately. Uh, why this talk? So. Uh, Today we're talking about a lot about React. A lot of us use React, we code in React, but the reality is you always work with an ecosystem every time. So whether it's the browser you're using React on, the web APIs, like you saw a lot of event listeners, uh, you deal with customers if you take a step back, all of us deal with customers in our code, and we're always having a business domain. Like specifically me, I'm in e-commerce now. So we all deal with those. So you deal in an ecosystem, it adds complexity to your app, which in turn adds bugs to your app. And today I'm talking about one of those bugs that I had. So uh, just a, a brief background about this uh, bug. It wasn't at Shopify. It was at a startup I worked at before in 2019. It was a restaurant marketplace app built in React and Redux. Hundreds of users, millions in GMV. Not that big, like compared to Shopify, of course. We had about 50 employees. Um, like about 10 to 15 were in tech developers. So there's a happy path to the app, which is pretty standard in e-commerce. You log in, add items to your cart, provide shipping info, pay, get that money, and then receive your items. Pretty standard, right? Like this is what most e-commerce sites do. So that's what we had. Um, but then we had a very strange problem up here. Uh, one month or le like every once a month or less, a customer would report a specific bug. And they said they received less items than what they actually ordered. So what does that mean? So the app is kind of like very different now, so I had to do some, a little bit of screenshot work. So you can see here, five cases of pineapple, for example, is what they ordered. So a customer, for example, would say they actually got six or seven cases, not five. Very strange, very bad. So what do we do? In the startup life, you know, we did the same thing any developer would do, you know, check the order on the back end, make sure the numbers were correct, checked our server logs, see if there are any errors and that the numbers matched up, checked the emails that we sent to the supplier, were they the correct number? And uh, what we saw is, turns out our numbers in the database match everything. So we said, customer, you're wrong, our data's right, too bad. You know what I mean? So you made a mistake, essentially. And, and, and that's why it's important to kind of talk about our assumptions when we have bugs. So this gives you some context into what we were thinking at the time. So in, this, in the restaurant industry in North America, we have this concept of shorts. So when you order from Amazon, you order two or three items, you're going to get those items. Nobody tells you after you order, they say, hey, uh, too bad, I can only get you two things out of those three. In the restaurant industry, it's different. I show up with five cases of pineapple that you ordered, I only have four. So I say, hey customer, I only had four this morning, I'll give you a credit. Or, uh, you know, so sometimes the customer sees five cases and they say, this one looks terrible, I'm not taking it, so they give it back on the spot. So this is common in the industry, the shorts and missing items is common. The other thing is like, when I order from Amazon, I order like two or three things at a time, like I never order like, you know, like 50 coffee bags, even though I want to, but um, in this industry, you know, people order like 20 cans of tomatoes, 50 heads of lettuce, 60 whatever, so there's a lot of opportunity for mistakes in those items. Uh, a lot of times our customers weren't tech, uh, tech savvy, so a lot of times the errors were not actual errors, so this is something we were used to. And the bug didn't even happen that often. It was like less than once a month, and we couldn't reproduce it at all. So to us, you know, this is the mindset we approached the problem, and, and it was very like dismissive. And that's the big reason why I think it, it stayed in there. So the problem is, as we grew, it kept happening with bigger customers, once a week now. So we had to start investigating very, very, very seriously. So again, the back-end approach we took, this is the one we did before, we tried it again. Try the same thing, nothing's wrong. So what's going on? But we know it's a problem now. Okay, front-end approach. Check our front-end logs, we're using Sentry at the time, still nothing. Couldn't reproduce it in different browsers and mobile devices. QA team, still couldn't find anything. Uh, finally, we looked through our recording software called Full Story. So if any of you are familiar with Full Story, it's a, kind of an analytics tool that allows you to record your user sessions. Very nice app. Uh, LogRocket is another example that I love for front-end developers especially. So with this recording, I was actually able to see the bug happening in production. I saw a customer have like order six items in their shopping cart, go, and then it's all of a sudden five. 
So I saw it with my own eyes, no denying it now, but still couldn't reproduce. And if you can't reproduce, how do you fix it? So now we have to reproduce it. So why, how could this happen? So this is an example like shopping cart. You see this a lot with the plus minus kind of buttons. So the, what happened was a customer was clicking plus, 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 plus. And then every time we send the request to the server and, um, you know, uh, and we were debouncing and things like that, but every time they pressed the button, they were sending a request to the server. So somehow, this request to change the quantity somehow was just not getting to the server, right? Somehow it wasn't. So by the time uh, you came to the checkout page, you didn't see it. So I had a hunch at the time because I was working a lot with restaurants in person. One thing I noticed is that a lot of times restaurants, the person themselves, they put their order in their kitchen. And in the kitchen, the Wi-Fi is usually pretty bad. So I was like, maybe the request is not making it because the Wi-Fi sucks, you know? So this could be the reason. So all I did, you might be familiar with this, do some throttling, slow 3G, and I'm like, let's give it a try. I mean, we've tried everything. And what do you know? That was the problem, right? So we were able to reproduce it now. So how do we fix it? Well, we knew it didn't make it in time to the checkout page, which is why it happened. So you see the different quantities. So what we end up doing, and this is kind of a, uh, an example here, is we're using what the customer sees at the time of checkout or the time of sh the shopping cart as the source of truth, not the server. What the customer sees, because that's all that mattered. So if there's a mismatch between the shopping cart and the checkout, Right? Like there's six of the shopping cart and then five at the checkout. We don't care about what the server says. It's what the customer saw. So we change it back. And that's what we did because these are two different pages. So um, that way, the, the, the version that the customer sees is always what they get. And we never had that problem again. So just to keep this brief, the lessons learned. The source of truth is not the server. Not always the server. Sometimes it is. Start by assuming that the bug is your fault. There's a, a saying about uh, it's called select is not broken, uh, which basically means like, you know, the database itself is not broken. You broke something. It's you that caused the problem. Come from it from that mindset. Screen recordings are very helpful for front-end developers. If you can do it, make sure you block any personal information. A lot of them do out of the box, but sometimes depending on your industry, it might be more strict. And don't test your app in the best conditions. We do that a lot as developers. You're like, on my uh, you know, MacBook, uh, 64 gigs of RAM, and best internet in the world, it was perfect. So what's the problem, right? So why does this matter? Wrong assumptions can and will cost you money. I personally cost the, money, uh, the company a few thousand dollars. No big deal, right? Um, now, at Shopify, our scale is very massive. Three and a half million dollars worth of sales per minute on Black Friday. So I can't do that. If I do that at Shopify, it's, it's a, a lot bigger uh, of a financial responsibility. So I take these lessons as a way not to repeat them at Shopify. And I pass this knowledge down to other developers to make sure that we approach bugs and, and, and with a mindset similar to what we did after we solved it. So that's my talk. Thank you very much, and I hope you learned something.